Good evening and welcome to SNC Tonight. I'm your host, Carl Jackson, sitting in this evening. You can follow me online, all things social media, at The Carl Jackson Show, whether that's X, Instagram, Facebook, True Social, Gitter, wherever I am, The Carl Jackson Show. And please, as well, follow my podcast, The Carl Jackson Show, wherever you go to get your podcast. Guys, we've got a lot of topics to cover tonight, a bang-up show for you. Uh, first, we're going to start with my guest. His name is Yaron Brook. He's a former Israeli intelligence uh, first sergeant. Also, he has his own podcast talking about uh, foreign affairs, and it is the Yaron Brooks Show. Yaron, welcome to Salem News Channel tonight. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so you now you were you were a former Israeli uh, intelligence. Is that is that correct? That is true. Military intelligence, yes. Okay, so military intelligence. I, I want to talk to you about the latest developments. Uh, the uh, U.S. drone strike in Baghdad that occurred on February 7 killed uh, commander yeah. of the Iran-backed Shiite militia. This according uh, to CENTCOM. Uh, give us your, your take on that. And I, it, obviously it was in response to the three American soldiers uh, that were killed in the drone attack uh, in, in Jordan. Uh, it, do, you, do you feel like this is a, an adequate response by the U.S. military? No, I don't. And, and, I, and I think that, that what the U.S. is doing, and, and this is not a military issue, it's more strategic political issue, what the U.S. is doing is evading the bigger, the bigger question. The real issue is the fact that all the instability in the Middle East today, from what's happening in Israel and both its northern front and Gaza, to what's happening to, with the Houthis in, in Yemen, to what's happening with American troops in, uh, in Iraq and Syria, all of it is instigated by one party in the Middle East, and that party is Iran. Iran has been behind uh, the, the, the terrorist activity against the U.S., it's been killing Americans. Uh, since really 1979, when they took over our embassy in uh, in Tehran, and we continue to ignore the threat that Iran poses to American security, we continue to ignore the threat that Iran poses to to the Middle East and and uh, and to American interests in the Middle East. And as a consequence, we we do these pinpricks. We we take out we take out some officer of the of the Iranian. Uh, Revolutionary Guard, or we take out somebody from their Shiite militias, or all these things. But that's just kicking the can down the road. Ultimately, unless we deal in some way with the Iranian regime, uh, all we're doing is delaying. They will come after us. They will try to kill American troops again. They will stir up the Middle East constantly in order to get us involved and get Americans killed. And, and we're just delaying, which is a strategy we've engaged in for 40 years, and it's failed. Completely failed. Yaron, it, it, Biden relieved sanctions on uh, on the mullahs of Iran. I mean, they have they have billions and billions, tens of billions of dollars as a result of those relief sanctions. They're selling oil up the wazoo. We've hindered our own oil, our energy independence right here in the United States of America. What what do you think the Biden administration is attempting to accomplish with Iran? I mean, obviously, it, it's not going to happen. This this simply doesn't make sense to me. Why? Uh, why we won't just destroy these people? I, I, help me, help me figure this out. Well, I think the whole idea of destroying people is not politically correct. Certainly not among the Democrats, but among Republicans, neither. I mean, uh, during the Trump administration, these same Shiite militias attacked U.S. troops constantly, killed U.S. troops, and and Bush didn't do anything, Obama didn't do anything, Trump didn't do anything, and and Biden's not doing anything. Biden, in particular is interested in a deal. They're interested in a nuclear weapons deal. They're interested in cutting some kind of compromise with the Iranians, where they stop refining uranium and they, they commit to not building an atomic bomb. And in exchange for that, you know, we allow them to sell oil. Uh, you know, Biden is still, in spite of the fact that they're shooting across the border, he's still trying to negotiate a deal with the, uh, with the Iranians. At the same time, the Iranians are refining a uranium, uh, they are, if they wanted to, they're probably months away from an atomic bomb. Uh, and yet, all we can do is talk to them. You're absolutely right. The, the, the only way to deal with Iran at this point is to destroy this regime, is to destroy the capacity to generate revenue through oil. We could do that by destroying their export facilities. They're all in one place. You could do it in a day. Uh, we should destroy the capacity to build nuclear weapons. We can do that. We know where the facilities are. And we should destroy the capacity 
of the uh, Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard to inflict pain all over the Middle East. Again, we have the capacity to do that. I think we could do all of that without putting any troops on the ground that and without risking any American lives. I'm so I'm so thankful that you said that you're on because I know even people on listen my side of the aisle I, I'm a conservative and often I'll hear listen well we don't want want this long drawn out forever war with Iran and I'm not convinced that it'll take that and you've absolutely just outlined why it wouldn't take that so it's just a matter of I, I guess political will uh, to get the the, but, the job done. There's an important point here. We're in a prolonged extensive war with Iran. That is great. We've yes, been great. in a war with Iran since 1979 at taking our embassy was an act of war killing the marines in beirut 244 marines died in their barracks in beirut that was an iranian operation everybody knows that they've been killing americans for 40 years we have done nothing they know they're at war with us they chant every friday in their mosques death to america we pretend we can cut deals we pretend we can be at peace but the reality is that conservatives i mean everybody should realize uh, you know, the longer Iran is allowed to, to build weapons, to, build, to, to move towards nuclear, nuclear weapons, the more at risk you're placing American civilians and the American military. Okay, we have just over a minute left, so uh, a, a couple of questions for you. First off, we've hit 85 targets that belong to the IRGC. Uh, also, we've killed a couple of uh, 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 a couple of generals, if you will, uh, that Iran backs from Hezbollah. I can't even pronounce their names, but uh, uh, it, it, but do you think this will deter Iran any iota? No. Will it slow them no, down? No. Forty slow seconds. them down a little bit. Maybe in the short run, so they'll, they'll they won't launch any any drones for the next two months against Americans. But ultimately, no zero. They'll replace the generals. Uh, you know, just cutting cutting these groups off on the top never works. Uh, they they keep replacing them. We saw that originally with ISIS. We saw that to some extent with Al Qaeda. Uh, they re, they regenerate. And unless you go and actually do kind of the root canal work, you actually get to the source of this. You're not doing anything to protect American lives. All right, 10 seconds. Uh, 168 times we've been hit since October 17th. Uh, uh, America has five, five seconds. What do we do? We should take out their oil facilities. We should take out their capacity to inflict damage on Americans, and we should definitely take out their nuclear program. All right. You're oh, Ron Brook. We'll leave it there. Carl Jackson, M4SNC tonight. We'll be back in a few.